Okay, so welcome to the ninth lecture. We're going to talk about the connected components. So we just break a space X into connected pieces, although the space itself might not be connected. So here's the definition. We just really just define equivalence relations such that two elements are equivalent if and only if there exists a connected subspace of X contains X and Y. And we just define the equivalence classes are called the components. Okay, and we just need to verify that this is indeed an equivalence relation x equivalent to itself yes because x is contained in this set right and this set is in connected space because if we the only topology we can give for this set the only topology we can give is this and the empty set right this is the only topology we can give for this set and this set the only clopen sets <coughs> there's no other uh clopen sets so yeah, it is connected. And x is equivalent to y implies that y is equivalent to x. It's easy to see, right? And to show the transitivity, because, okay, x equivalent to y, y equivalent to z, then we see that y is a common point, right, for a connected space. Right, y is the co co common point, and we take the union, gives that x is equivalent to z, right? And the component is connected. Each component is indeed connected. Well, if we just pick x naught and c, and for any x and c, they are equivalent. So there exists a x connected that contains x and x naught. Then, for x runs through all the elements in c, we see that x naught is in all the a x. So we just take the union, which is equal to c, as a connected space, right? Here's another theorem. Is that given the components of x, a is a connected subspace. Okay, so we're given a component and a connected subspace. Then a intersects exactly one C alpha with a is non empty. <coughs> In fact, because equivalence class gives a partition of the set x. So given a connected subspace of x, a, okay, given any a is non empty. Right, that a must intersect, a intersect sum. A intersect sum, right? If a is non empty subspace of x, then a intersects sum c alpha. This is true because c alpha, their components, their partition of x, right? Destroy union of x. Okay, now, um, and we show that a inter intersects exactly one c alpha. Okay, so that is the theorem. And the theorem is, okay, suppose A intersects two, uh, two uh, components. Then we pick x1 and this, right, and x2 and this. Then x1, x2 are in A, so they're equivalent. So C1 is equal to C2 because x1 is in C1, x2 is in C2, and x1 is equivalent to C, x2. This implies C1 is equal to C2. Okay, so A intersect exactly one. And we know that every element in A must be in some C alpha. And now we see that A intersect exactly one C alpha, which means that, <coughs> which means that A is actually contained in C1. Okay. All right, now we just move the notion of path connected, right? To path connected, we define the equivalent if there exists a path from x to y. And we just verify that this is an also an equivalence relation. So first, we need some lemma. So we see that, we, we, we will show that any two closed intervals are homeomorphic. So first we define a function from a, b to zero, one by this continuous function. Okay, and it's easy to see as injective and to show that it is surjective, <clears throat> for any y and 0, 1, this input, because y is in 0, 1, right? So a plus y, b minus a is still in a, b. And if we just sub this in, right? a plus y, b minus y, a minus a over b minus a, right? Then, okay, this and... Um, this cancels out, 
right, so y of b minus a over b minus a cancels out, gives you y. All right, so indeed, <coughs> this gives y, right? So it is a bijective continuous function, bijective continuous function. And the inverse is given, right, as you might guess, right? We were already given here, right? F inverse of y should be a plus y b minus a. And this is also a continuous function, trivially to see is a linear function, so it is continuous. I mean, we're, we're talking about the continuity in, in R right now, right? But it is epsilon delta continuous. But epsilon delta continuous is equivalent to open set continuous. We show this, right? So this doesn't really matter that much. It's, it's an also in continuous function. Okay. So we so show that A, B is homeomorphic to 0, 1. Similarly, we can show that C, D is homeomorphic with the 0, 1, which means that by the composition of function, right, composition of continuous function is continuous function, which means that A, B is homeomorphic with C, D. So this, this means that if F is from A, B to X, a path from X to Y, then we can find another path from X to Y. That is from 0 to 1, right? So if we just A, B, right? We ha have a homeomorphism, right, to 0, 1, into x, right? Okay, no, no, no. So if f is from a, b to x, okay, let me, let me just draw it here. If a, b to x is f, then I can find a homeomorphism, 0, 1, g. Uh, sorry, um, let's say h. Right, h from zero one to a b, x from a b to x, then g is defined as f of h is continuous. Right, so we're done. So we can find a map from zero one a path from x to y. <coughs> okay. Now. Okay, so x is equal to x by the constant map, and constant map is continuous. And if f x is equal to y, we have a path from x to y, then we call the we define the reverse path, right? It's a reverse path. It's a it's a composition of continuous function. This is continuous. A linear function is continuous. It's a continuous from y to x. So y is equal to x. X equal to y implies y equal to x. So it's like if f so this is x and this is y f this is f what f did and again x y this is what g did right it just goes like reverse direction it goes from here but we also go from here right and this is really the composition of continuous function. Okay, and now to show the transitivity, we need the Pasting lemma. Right, this is where the, the name Pasting came from. So if f is a path from x to y, g is a path from y to z, right? We could just make it arbitrary, it doesn't matter, right? Then we use the Pasting lemma because 0, 1, 1, 2 are closed in 0, 2, right? Take a second to think about the y. Okay, so y because Zero one zero one's complement and zero complement is two one, right? It's a basis element, basis, and zero two because okay zero two we give it an ordered topology because it's a convex set, right? Usually we we should interpret it as a subspace inherited from R, but this doesn't really matter because zero two is convex so we can just think about the ordered topology on it directly, and this is closed because the complement is equal to this and is a basis for the order topology and zero two. Okay, so that is the steps that is skipped, right? Okay, and F1 is equal to G1 is equal to Y, right? They agree on the intersection. They agree on the intersection, then the new function is continuous such that 
right, by the passing lemma, right, h0 is equal to x, h2 is equal to z, it is a continuous function, so, so this is indeed an equivalence relation, okay, so the same thing, we can just talk about the path components, the path component is path connected, but to show that, remember how we showed connected components connected, where we pick a point, we fix a point, and for any two points, since they're equivalent, they have a connected set that contains them both, right? And we have a common point for all of them, so the union is connected. And now in our case, okay, the first line won't change, right? So there exists a path from x to x naught, right? From x to x naught. So x naught, so so what we can think about it here is that x naught given any points we can have a we have a path to x naught, right? Every two point every two points we can have a point with x naught, right? And for any for any this point to this point, we just go from there and then we go from here. Right? It's a passing lemma. Right? Again, it's just really just passing lemma. So that's why we worked here. Same as above, but use passing lemma, right? And the theorem is that the components, and for any A path connected, they intersect exactly one, right? So really, the proof is like the, exactly the same, right? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Okay, now we come with the definition of locally connected. So space locally connected at the point X, if we have that at this point for any neighborhood, there exists a connected neighborhood such as contained in U. So if your point X, you're, connect, you're in some neighborhood U, then you're in some connected neighborhood V that is contained in U. Okay, this is called a space is locally connected. And Immediately, R is locally connected, right? Moreover, Rn is also locally connected, right? It is locally connected. Thus, we say that space is locally connected if it holds for all x, okay? And same for locally path connected. Is locally path connected at x if or any? There's a low path connected, path connected neighborhood V such as blah, 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 okay? So the theorem states that X is locally connected is equivalent of saying that for any open set, each component of this open set U is open in X, okay? So this is the equivalence relation. So for from this direction, we see that, okay, given you're locally connected, and we pick a point, uh, we'll pick a set open, and we get a component C of U, right? We want to show that C is open in X, right? So, if X is in C contained in U, because X is locally connected, right? So, we, U is a neighborhood of X, right? U is a neighborhood of X, so we pick a V connected neighborhood of X such that V is contained in U. So, V is a connected subspace of U, right? First of all, V is connected subset of X. But V is containing U, and U, U is open in X, or so U is containing X, right? Subset of X. So, as again, V is the same as saying that V is a connected subspace of U. We talked about this from last lecture, right? So, X is in C, and V is in, so X is in C intersect V. So now here's a problem. V must be contained in C, right? Because V is a connected subspace of U, and C is a component of U, right? V is a connected subspace of U, C is a component of U, and V intersects C, so V must be contained entirely in C. This shows that X is in V contained in C. So for any X in C, we have a neighborhood of X such that X contain V subset of C. So this really just shows that C is open in X, right? 
I mean, right, this application should be clear enough because if we just do for, if we just do the same thing for all x, right, for all x is c. For all x is c, like if you just write this as vx, then vx, the union of those is equal to c, which is a union open set, which is c is open. Okay, now for the converse, if components of open sets are open, we pick x and x, u neighborhood of x, and see the component of u containing x. Okay, now we see that c is open, c is containing u. So we're done. And for any neighborhood, u neighborhood of x, there's a component, components connected, right? And it is open. And it's containing u. So we're done. Okay. And the same thing is for path connected, right? It is path connected if only a blah blah blah. And the comp path component is open in X. And the proof is really the same thing. It is really really the same thing. Right. Okay, now we can relate between path component and component. We can relate them. See to see why. So given a space, path component lies in a component. Uh, I mean, this should be like intuitively true because path co connectedness is stronger than connectedness, right? So the path component, like in some sense, must lie in a connected component. Now, if X is locally path connected, okay, locally path connected then path components and components are the same. An example for this is the space R, right? Now, given C component of X, X is contained in C, right? Now, and we give P a path component such that X is contained in P. Okay, so now, because P is connected, right, path component like it's connected, right? Path connected set is connected. So P is connected, so P must be in C because X is in C and it's like P, right? So this is like automatically true, right? Just by the intuition that path is stronger than just connected. Now, if X locally path connected, then we want to show that P is equal to C. So we suppose that P is a proper subset of C. We take U, is the union of path component that is different from P and intersects C, which means that it contains in C. Because P is a proper, uh, proper subset of C. So we pick all the other union of path component that is different from P and that intersects C. Thus C could be a union of P and U. And this, what we said, really shows that PQ is a separation of C. Okay, and that gives a contradiction. Okay, so that's the end of the lecture 9. But I feel like I can just do more on lecture 10. The lecture 10 is called compact sets. So what does it mean by space for being compact? Well, given the topological space, a collection of subsets of X is an open cover of X if is a subset of the topology, okay? So it consists of open sets and union of sets of an A equals X. And X is compact if for any open cover there exists a finite sub-collection that also covers X. So we can change the problem from uncountably infinite, infinite problems to finite problems, which is a really, really, really strong tool. And there are many important compact sets. Okay, so first let's just relate to subspaces. So we give a definition here. Why a subset of X, okay? And we say A covers Y if the union of sets in A contains Y, okay? So now we give Y a subset of X. The subspace, subspace topology is compact if and only if every covering on Y by open sets in X and this finite subcollection also covers y. Okay. So the implicate uh, so the proof is really just by the definition and this set, right? So if y is compact, we pick 
a covering of y, the covering of y. So each a alpha is open in x. Then we intersect with y is an open cover of y, right? They're open in y. So y is compact to the finite of them, so then converse y. Conversely, if we have an open cover of y, then each a alpha is open in y, so we can write it as this. So each an a alpha is open in x. And by the condition, right? Um, this open cover of y, so each a alpha covers y, right? And because the condition is a finite subcollection that also covers y, so this covers y, and we go back is the open cover of y. And some basic, very basic um, properties of compact set. If y is a closed subspace of a compact space x, then y is compact. To do this, so give a covering of y by open set in x. Now, because y is closed, we can adjoin the collection by the set x minus y, like the complement, right? Now, here it comes. b is an open cover of x. x is compact. Because, okay, this covers y and this fill, fills out the, the rest, right? So it's an open cover of x. x is compact. We we'll take the finite sub collection and we can remove, if needed, remove x minus y if needed, right? The result collection is a covering of y by open sets in x. And it's finite. Right? So closed subspace of compact space is compact. And uh, compact subspace of Hausdorff space is closed. Okay? Compact subspace of Hausdorff space is closed. So we show that. We just show that x minus y is open in x, right? So this is again, right? We use the the condition of separating them, right? For any x naught and for y and y, using the Hausdorff condition of x, you can find v y u y neighborhoods this joint such that, right? And we can just do this for all the y's, right? So y is a contained in this, right? Y is contained in those because. Those v y are not necessarily contained in y. We didn't require that. It's only a neighborhood of y. And v y is open in x, right? So it's a covering. But y is a compact, right? Y is a compact. V y open in x. It's like a finite sub collection. From here, we can just take u x not to the intersection. And this really disjoint with y, right? Because if x right in here then x okay if, if x is an uyi if x is in all the uis then x is not in vy it's not in vy for all the i's right so it's an intersection of is not in all of them but by de Morgan's law this is really equal to this yes so if x is not in dome, then x is not in y, right? So, ux not is a neighborhood of x and x minus y, right? I mean, this space is really ux, right? So, ux not is contained in uh, this complement is contained in this complement, which is x minus y, right? Yes, and uh, yeah, exactly. And we just run through all the x nod, it's open in x, okay? So here we're done. And what we notice in our proof here is that from our proof, we can state a lemma and we're gonna use it for later. So given y is compact subspace of a Hausdorff space, if x not is not in y, right? X x not is not in y, then there exists disjoint open sets in x such that x is in u, y is contained in v. Okay. So this is the u, right? This is the u. X is in u. And. Uh, this is the V, right? This is the V. 
this is the V, right? And they're disjoint open. They're disjoint, right? We, we show that they're disjoint right here, right? Okay, so this is really it. And from next time, we're going to continue on the compact space. Okay, I'll see you guys.